animating logos, blinking AI characters, blending together different art styles. I don't know about you, but this is just amazing. These are workflows by Matteo, who is the mind behind the IP adapter. He took a lot of time explaining them to me. And so now I give this knowledge and inspiration to you. Let's get started. Also, don't forget to enter your workflow into the open art contest. There is a prize pool of over $13,000 with five different awards and four special awards. So there's a high chance that you will actually win and you can enter multiple workflows and the entry is completely free. This is the first workflow by Matteo I want to show you today and it's an absolutely beautiful use of the IP adapter in a way you couldn't do it with Automatic 1111. So what we are seeing here is an image that uses three different styles. In the background we have this Van Gogh style, then we have one of the characters in a photorealistic style and then the other one is more in an anime style. For that we're using a mask in three different colors. Now the important the important part here is that this mask is not detailed, it's a rough zone and it should be around the size of one third of the image, not much smaller than that with a 1.5 model. You can see here when we are loading the mask, we have channels for that mask. So technically you can also load four different channels because if we click on here, you can see we have alpha, red, green and blue. But in this case, we are only using the colors. This is why we choose these colors. And you can see this is the blue one, the red one, the green one. Now this is then sent into the IP adapter node. So when we look down here, we can see our first image being loaded into a prepare image for clip vision node. And then from there, we are going into the IP adapter. Now here, as you can see, we have different inputs that are coming in. So one of course is the image. The other one is the model and the mask that is coming from down here. So the model in this case that is connected to the first IP adapter node is Epic Realism. And then of course, if we look at this node again, we see that up here, we also have two other inputs. These are for the IP adapter models. One of them is the IP adapter model itself. In this case, IP adapter plus SD 1.5. It's very important. This is the plus model, not the regular model. And then below that we have the clip vision model. This is called the IP adapter encoder 1.5 in that case. The IP adapter files that you need for that. So I will link this page below. You can see there is 1.5 models. There is SDXL models. And then of course down here we have the clip encoder models for 1.5 but also for SD. SDXL. Now up here for the different files, you can see we have a normal version SD 1.5, but you want to use the plus version of SD 1.5. And then below that, we also have a plus face version. This is when you want to apply a face to a character similar to Roop or Reactor. And below that we have a full face version. Now that is much stronger and much more detailed, but also uses over 200 tokens. So that is going to render a lot slower if your card can handle that at all. So the plus face should be good in most cases. And for the style transfer we did, the plus model is the one you want to use. Now for the location of the files, it's a good idea to go into your ComfyUI folder in there again into the ComfyUI folder and in there into the models folder. Inside of the models folder, you want to create an IP adapter folder, all lowercase, all one word. And then in there, you're going to save the IP adapter plus SD 1.5 model or the other models you want to use. Now, like I said, down here, you also have the clip vision encoder models. For that, you want to save this as a different location. Also, this is going to save as a model.save tensor file. So you might want to rename this into the IP adapter encoder 1.5.save tensor so you know what you're loading. For that, you also want to go into the models folder inside of the ComfyUI folder, but inside of the models folder, you're going to go for the clip vision folder. And this is where you save your file. Like I said, rename it to IP adapter encoder 1.5. 
Now, because we are using multiple images, we are sending the output of the first apply IP adapter node into a second apply IP adapter node. And as you can see here, the output is model. So we are using the model input here. We are doing the exact same thing with the second image, prepare it with clip vision, send it into the IP adapter. And then, of course, also we do it a third time with our background here, clip vision, send it into the IP adapter. Be very sure that you're always using the right mask channel for that so that this is applied to the right part of the image. After that, the process is very simple because this is the model output that goes down here into our K sampler, where we have a model input, a positive prompt, a negative prompt, and a latent image, of course, that gives us the resolution of the image. In this case, of course, we need a resolution that is good for 1.5 images. So we're using 512 by 768. Now here we have the first VAE decode and we get this version that is a little bit blurry because it's lower resolution. So Matteo is sending this into an upscaler up here made of these different nodes and then again into a second K sampler to render this in a higher resolution. So that we get a very nice result that is high resolution and also high detailed. Now, personally, I would think for this last part for the upscaling, I would rather prefer to use the ultimate upscaler because that is tiling the image before upscaling it so that it works easier on slower, older GPUs. Of course, with this workflow, you can combine all kinds of different images. You can even have the characters interact with each other and combine not only different styles, but of course, also the same style with different characters. The interesting thing here is when you look at the result is that even though the mask is very rough, the backgrounds are rendered together in a very beautiful way. Now I want to show you a second workflow that is using conditioning on the different mask parts so that you can apply different prompts words to the mask. As you can see here, I simply loaded the image we had before. Now this is not actually used as an image that is only to define the mask space. So you can use anything that has the size and resolution you want to use. To be able to paint the mask, in the load image node, you want to right click and then click down here on open in mask editor. Now, if you do that, you get this window here. Down here, you have the thickness of your brush and you can simply start to paint in a mask to where you want to have the area mask inside of your image. One thing you might want to look out for is that there is not too much or any overlap of the mask. I have a little bit of overlap in this case. Now, in this case, again, we are loading these two images, one in the anime style, one in the realistic style. And here we are using two clip text encoder nodes. These are going into conditioning set mask nodes. So you can see in this example that for the woman where we want to have red hair instead of the original gray hair, we are setting the additional prompt text of red head woman red hair with a weight of 1.5. This is then going into the conditioning set mask node that is also loading the mask for the specific person that we want to apply to. So for that region of the image. Now, as you can see here, we are doing this twice. One of the women we want to have blonde, the other one we want to have red hair. So we have to do the conditioning for set mask twice. And then of course, we have to combine both of these conditions. So for that, we need a conditioning combine note. Now, because we also need to combine this with the actual prompt of our image, in this case, two women in a cherry tree forest, we have to use another conditioning combine note to combine this with the original prompt. After that, everything is running as before. We have our two images, we have our two masks, we combine them in the IP adapter nodes, and that then goes into the K sampler down here. As a last step in this case, I'm using the ultimate SD upscale as I talked about in the last workflow I showed you. 
And as you can see here in the result, it's actually picking up on the style. So one character is a bit more realistic. The other one is more anime inspired, but also one of the character has red hair while the other one has blonde hair in the original image. The character here has more of gray hair and the photorealistic character has dark brown hair, but here it has blonde hair. Of course, you can use this in a lot of different variations to influence what specifically you want to have inside of the prompt. This might also be a great opportunity to point out different elements that you want to have in the image. For example, glasses or other elements on the character that are not just the style, but you actually want to have as features on that character in the image. Next, we're going to look at another really amazing workflow. As you can see, this is creating a very beautiful blue blinking animation. So as you can see here, I rendered these two images. Now I used a little trick here by rendering the image with open eyes, then rendering the image with closed eyes, and then using a graphic software to only put the closed eyes onto the same body so no of the other details change. These are then using a repeat image batch node that gives the amount. So we want to have the eye open for six frames and then closed for two frames for the input. This is then split or repeated for two batches with these eight images. This again is then prepared down here in a clip vision to be loaded into the IP adapter. Again, we are using here our adapter plus model and the IP adapter encoder 1.5. Now, one thing that can be important here is the checkpoint model you're using. In this case, I'm using the Dream Shaper 8 model. And more importantly, for the animated diff loader, you absolutely need the MMSD version 1.5 version 2 model. Again, I've linked for you a page where you can find that. You have here the different models. Make sure you get the version 2, not the version 1. You can download it from these sources. Google Drive link. It's easy to see the models. You can see that this is the version 2 model that you want to download. So here on the right side, there is this download arrow. And you want to save that inside of your ConfUI folder in the Custom Notes folder in the ConfUI animated diff evolved folder in there in the models folder. See, there is my file sitting right here. Another thing that is extremely important for this to work is that you click here on your manager and then to click on update all. Let that run through. So it's updating all of your extension node packs and all of your ConfUI. Then close ConfUI and restart it again. If this workflow doesn't work yet, again run through the update all. And of course, this workflow is also part of the downloads that I'm giving you as workflows, including these two testing images so you can experiment with that. The rest of it is pretty standard. You can see we have here our two text prompts, positive and negative. It goes into a case sampler here. And this is then doing a VAE decode into the video combine where all of these images are combined. You can see also here you have a format where you can choose between different formats that you want to use it as a GIF, as a WebP file or as an MP4, for example. It is very important also here that you set your empty latent image with a batch size of 16 because this is built at the moment for 16 frames. Next, I want to show you an absolutely stunning workflow that is able to blend between two images. In this case, we are creating a really interesting animation of a logo, as you can see here. And this is using here these masks that are increasingly getting bigger. Now, what you see here is not a sprite grid, but instead you have individual images that are then combined to this preview image here. I want to show you two different workflows. One can create 16 images and is good for most CPUs. The other one can create 32 images is what we see right here. It's of course longer and smoother, but at the same time, it uses a lot more time and a lot more GPU power. Now, first, let's have a look at the 16 frames workflow. For that, we are loading the mask images with this node from a folder. I will provide the folder with my download and the zip. And you can see here, these are individual PNGs that are 
black on white with this box getting bigger in the middle. It's interesting to know that you can also use gray values in here, for example, to blend from black to white in between gray values. And this will then give you a cross dissolve. But you can also create any kind of other animation with these steps. As you can see here, we have 16 masks for our 16 frames. Now this is then converted into a mask and then applied to the images that we want to blend. So here we have the original image and here we have the resulting image where this is supposed to go. Of course, again, we are using here our IP adapter plus SD 1.5 and the IP adapter encoder 1.5. And in a similar fashion, this is first loading the first image with our clip vision into the IP adapter. And then the first IP adapter goes into a second IP adapter that is loading our second image again with clip vision into this adapter. And as you can see here, the masks are provided to both of these adapters down here, but then they are also provided to a control net that is used down here. Now here's a very important differentiation between this workflow and the 32 frame workflow. This is using the control net V11 F1 E SDE 15 tile FP16 model. This model you can download by clicking on the manager and then going to install models. And then here you want to type tile and search. And you can see here we have a tile FP16 V11 F1 E model. This is already then installing into the correct folder. We are going to use a different model for the 32 frame workflow. Again, for our empty latent image, we are setting a batch size of 16 images. Go to our K sampler, VAE decode, and then into the video combine. Now the second workflow is basically working in the same way. The only difference is how we render the images at the end. So when you pay a closer attention to this area down here in the lower left, you will see we have a uniform context option and there it says length of 16 frames because this is the maximum frame we can render with animate diff at the moment. So we are rendering 16 frames and then another 16 frames. But you can also see here there's an overlap of four frames. This means the first four frames are taken from the last four frames of the video we rendered before, of the images we rendered before. And then in a last render step, it's also rendering the last four images, the last four frames. And as you can see here, for our control net model, we have a different model here. This one is called control net V11 F1 E SD 1.5 tile. So it's a different version. I will also link this version below the video. And this one you can put into the ConfuI folder, into the models folder, and in there into the control net folder where you have all of your other control net models. Of course, you can also load that over from automatic 1111 if you want to. The rest of the workflow is basically the same, but you can see here in our empty latent, we have set this to a batch size of 32 in this case. And for both of these workflows, I'm using deliberate version three. Deliberate version four is also going to work. Both of them are just for private use, not for commercial use. Straight up magic, my friends. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.